Oh my god, here we go, let's talk about some cards on how to use these two. I know it took a while for me to do something like that, but here it is. And at first I wanted to do a future list, talking about all the cards. But I realized that, honestly, most of the roster on list 2 is pretty freaking good. You can take it offline and online, and as long as you get used to it, you can do very well with it. So I decided to focus on the best vehicles that you can do of every class right now. Initially, I thought to make it easy for myself, I just talk about the 10 best vehicles on the game. But then, it would be me just talking about these two classes. <laughs> Yeah, that wouldn't be very fun, right? I mean, we're still gonna talk about those vehicles, but at least I can talk about a little more than just Swift and the ATVs, which, if you play the game, you know how dominant those classes are. So if you're looking to hear about those really, really best vehicles, then just jump into the end of the video. But don't, please. And let's get started, because there's a lot to talk about, and I don't want this video to be more than 20 minutes long. Starting with no other than the bus, or essentially the best heavy duty vehicle. When it comes to heavy duty, there really is only one choice, and that is the VW Drag Bus. Honestly, back in the day, I thought that the only way for you to be a true collector was to have at least one Drag Bus on your collection. And to this day, I don't have one because I bought the wrong one. Yeah, the Drag Truck. It's less popular, less rare cousin. Yay. Anyway, what makes the drag bus so much better than anything else on the heavy duty class? It's simple. It's because the drag bus doesn't drive like a heavy duty. It actually is a swift. Yep. If you never played the game and don't know what the swift class are, it's all about the handling. The drag bus just handles like the swifts. There is also the extra boost variant that the swift class gets over other heavy stat based classes like the rockets and balance. But this doesn't apply much to the drag bus as it is a heavy duty after all and they naturally have high boost regain. So what you get is a heavy duty swift hybrid. And honestly, we are going to talk about a lot of cars with wrong labels and with hybrid stats, so be ready for it. It still might not be for everyone, mostly because of its thick size and its big proportions, so not a lot of players will enjoy having to maneuver this thing and it really isn't as reliable as a basic swift at the end of the day. But I do know a lot of good players that rock the drag bus and they make it look easy. Anyway, if you want to drive some real heavy duty vehicles, I would recommend Roller Thruster. It handles way better than any other heavy duty vehicle, besides the drag bus of course, and that's because it has a wage modifier, which makes this vehicle in particular lighter than the rest of the heavy duty class. Another recommendation of mine would be the Diesel Duty, a personal favorite, which is actually pretty decent on the right track, mostly tracks with fewer corners where you can abuse those amazing 6 charge boosts. And lastly, the Super Treasure Hunter Tankinator. This one is super fun to drive. It is mostly a diesel duty with a better handling, so it makes a little more reliable on most tracks. Still, it has lower top speed, but as long as you're boosting, you'll be fine. And that was it about the heavy duty stuff, so let's get moving to the next class, another very track reliant one, the Drift class. The Drift class is similar to the heavy duty when it comes to racing. This is mostly for the fact they have low boost regain and their only really high stat is handling. It's no surprise they are made for the drift events, but when it comes to racing, most of them are very underwhelming. Still, if you want to main a drifter, these are some of the good options that you can choose. Firstly, Drift King. I mean, it would be very weird if the car named Drift King wasn't good. And honestly, I don't think it's the best drifter, but it's very close to it. You can unlock it by completing 10 laps without losing your diff multiplier. And depending on the track, this can be done very easily. Plus, you don't need to do it all at once. And essentially what makes the Drift King a little better than the rest of the drifters is its better overall stats and those 5 chart boosts. Those 5 chart boosts carry this car. Similar to the Drift King, we have a new release, free DLC from the Highway 35 Muscle Tone. This one is another very similar to Drift King. I actually prefer Muscle Tone over Drift King when it comes to actually performing, and it works on the same strategy of overwhelming your opponent with 5 char boosts. Lastly, of those 5 char boost drifters, we get the Burning Shaker Unleashed, 
which you can get for free if you want the Hot Wheels Unleashed 1 game. Again, very similar to the other two, and by far the best bone shaker that you can get on these two. As for another different takes on good drifters, you can get the 2018 Ford Mustang. Yeah, it's kinda boring looking and doesn't look that impressive on those three charges, but similar to the roller toaster, it has the weight modifier which makes it a little lighter than the rest of the drifter and this helps the car a lot. The acceleration and its boots acceleration are increased by that and makes the Mustang probably the most reliable drifter that you can get. Another one that's very well known for the community since the first game is Surf and Turf. If you played the first game you know what I'm talking about, but there's no other car that's more high risk, high reward than this one. If you can handle this beast, it's amazing, it might be the best vehicle in the game, but a lot of good players are afraid of it. It has a lot of balancing issues and their handling might be too responsive for some players, so most people don't take it. I would only recommend this one if you're really really good at the game or you might get wrecked. Lastly we have the custom Volkswagen Super Treasure Hunting version and this one is kinda boring because it's just a Swift. Yeah, like the drag bus, I wouldn't even go far as say this one is a hybrid, it's more like just a full on Swift. It handles like Swift, it has the boost regain of Swift, so if you don't want to drive a drifter you can take the custom Volkswagen bug. I think we can go now to the balance cars. The jack of all trades are on these two. So, I love balance cars. I love how they look, I love how they handle. Some of my favorite on these two cars are balance cars. And different from what most of the community says, I generally think there are a lot of good choices here. Anyway, enough of me fanboying over this class, and let's just get into the best balance vehicles here. So, the best by far is the Volkswagen Golf GTI. This freaking vehicle is amazing and... Wait a minute. This isn't a balanced car, this is a Swift. Yeah, okay. The Golf GTI is not a balanced car, it's a Swift. Unfortunately, the best balanced vehicle is a fake balance. The Golf GTI is pretty much a Swift thing on every single way. It looks like a Swift, it handles like Swift, it has the boost regain of Swift. It is just a Swift with the wrong label. And therefore, I don't consider this one the official best balance vehicle. Moving on to the actual best balance vehicle, the Mercedes 300 SL. Oh yeah, this one is pretty good. And you know why? Well, it's not because it's Swift, but it's actually because it has a weight modifier, just like the Mustang and the roller toaster. I guess we are starting to see a pattern around here. So what you get is a car that actually feels like a balanced one and has that boost acceleration and just normal acceleration or something like a Swift. Some players say that this car is a bit unreliable, mostly because of its slim wheelbase, but I never had any issue with it, at least on my time trials, so I cannot agree on that one. Now, from something really agile to something really fast, top speed wise, we get three amazing vehicles. Firstly, we get the famous RD02, the Accelerators Racing Dawn vehicle that we used to have on the first game. And if you played the first game back in the day, you'll probably remember how this car used to have a broken top speed. I don't know if this is kind of easter egg from Milestone, but the RG02 has a really high top speed on this game. It's not broken like it used to be, but still very high. It's high enough to make this car stand out over the other balanced vehicles. It still is very clunky on the most part, especially on more technical tracks, but that top speed alone makes up for it. Another vehicle that's returning for Unleash 1 is my beloved GT Scorcher. Used to be my main on the first game and I still love driving it. It would be already a buff just for the fact that you actually can have 3 charge boosts this time around. But not only that, similar to the RG02, the GT Scorcher has a really high top speed. Even though both of them only have 3 boost charges, that top speed alone carries these vehicles very easily to the top. Not very surprising, GT Scorcher is very popular on this game. Must be all those Hot Wheels Let's Race viewers. Lastly is the Super Treasure Hunter 3 mil. By far, the best 3 mil that you can get on Leash 2, miles better than 3 mil 3 and requires way less effort to unlock it. The Super Treasure Hunter 2 mil does not have the same amazing top speed that the GT Scorcher and RG02 have, but it compensates with one extra charge boost. It is a bit of an underdog around the balanced car class in general, but I am assure you, give it a try, it's really good. And moving on to something that checks out the marks for a good vehicle, we get the Bully Goat. 
This Pontiac de Tionacov has amazing handling, solid top speed and delicious for charge boosts. The Polygot is probably the most well-rounded vehicle in the balance class. Lastly, we have a free DLC vehicle, the Track Manga. So, the thing about Track Manga is that it really isn't a balanced vehicle. It is actually a rocket. So, rocket vehicles have really responsive handling, very high grip and powerful boost acceleration. And Track Manga brings all of that. The only downside of it is that it only comes with two charges. In general, two charge vehicles are pretty awful, but it's not the Track Manga case. I know, boost resource is very important here. And only having three is already considered low enough, so going for two might be too little for most people. Still, I think Track Manga is very competitive, and as long as you take care of your boost resource, you can make it work. But yeah, it's not really a balanced vehicle. Honestly, I could go on and on talking about good balanced vehicles here. Car de Asada, Hot Seat, Sierra Thunder, 16 Angel, the base one, not the Super Treasure Hunter one. The free DLC Iridium from Acceleracers. Lots of great choices. I think we spend enough time with the balanced vehicles for now. And next we have our first batch of off-road vehicles, the subclass of rally cars. To be fair, most off-roaders are pretty decent, especially if they are on a track that has off-road, but only really the rally cars have the flexibility to take any kind of track and do well on it. Or the ATVs, which we will talk later. But as it stands right now, it's barely a subclass, as you only really get the Audi 4 on the base game, and if you decide to buy the Italian expansion pack, you can get the Lancer 037, which, by the way, I feel like is much better choice than the 4. We will be getting more rally cars in the future, but as it stands right now, that's about it. So if you want a vehicle that can take any kind of terrain, as well having a very high boost regain, the rally cars are for you. Oh man, now we're gonna have to talk about the rockets, that's one huge ass class. So the best rockets. The thing about rockets is that there really is no bad rocket. Okay, this one is exceptional and it's not because it has bad on the name, it really is not very good. But besides this one, most of them can work pretty well if you get used to them. And bonus points if you find the perk that really fits them. The thing about rockets is that the game sells you that they are the high speed monsters of the game, which we already saw that's not true, with cars like the RG02 and GT Scorcher. So you have to take them more as racing cars. They have a lot of grip, so they are very stable, easy to control, very responsive, especially when you want to start a drift. They also have really good boost acceleration, which makes them very fast boosting out of the corners. So you expect a class that's so overloaded like this one to have poor boost power, right? Although the boost regain is pretty slow on the rocket vehicles, you will see that the best one have a lot of boost charges to compensate for that. No better example than the Dabs Dabbing Dab Da Dabancinator. Yeah, Dabancinator, this car here. So yeah, when it comes to rockets, the Dab is essentially the easy mode for it. Really easy to handle, very grippy, solid top speed, and those freaking 5 charge boosts. Honestly, if we didn't have some of the Swifts and ATVs, this car would be a real issue. Following this rocket rule breaking trending, we get the Super Blitzing. Very similar to the DAF, brings a lot of boost charges. It's a little slower on the top speed wise, but honestly, I prefer this one over the DAF. I don't know, I really like the handling of this one. Another very nerdy vehicle of the rocket class is the Fast Fish. This fake ass Pilot Mahakuda is freaking insane. I think most people don't realize how strong this vehicle is. They say that it doesn't handle as good as the other one, but honestly, I feel like you are building wrong. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yep, yeah, it really deserves the fast on the name. I don't know about the fish though. Moving on to our next really good rocket, we have the Silhouette Sylvia S15. JDM fans will go nuts for this one. Luckily for you, the S15 is a bit of an underrated monster. I would say that you can get very close to the same level of something like the Dev or the Fast Fish, if you get used to it. Oh well, it was just a matter of time until we got our first Swift in the sky in here. Yeah, the Matador Mobile really isn't a rocket. 
it might not be exactly Swift, it's more like a hybrid between Rocket and Swift, but if you drive this one as a Rocket, it's gonna be a really bad time for you. It's a very good vehicle as you expect for a car with Swift traits. Give it a try if you don't like how the Rockets usually handle. So after that we get to the Rockets that make sense. What I mean by that is Rockets have really good start but not a lot of boost charges. And when it comes to that, the best one is the Solar CX-4. Hot use by the way. This one just feels great to drive. It might be the best handling wise Rocket right now. It takes corners like nothing else. Unfortunately, it can't really keep up with stuff like the dev, mostly because it lacks the boost power. As for other similar 3 boost charge rockets that you can get, if you're not a fan of the Solar CX-4 for some weird reason, are the 24 hours. Basically, the same thing as Solar CX-4 on almost everything. The Group C Fantasy. The prototype H24, Super Treasure Hunter version, not the base one, the Super Treasure Hunter version. And if you are willing to buy a DLC, the Accelerator DLC pack has the Carbide, another really great 3 boost charger rocket. And as we're talking about DLC, another great options are the F1 Racer from the Unstoppable Brother pack and the Impav the One from the Speed Kings pack. Honestly, Really great choices, especially in the 1, that one is a very underrated vehicle, it's really freaking fast. And now we can talk about the community's favorite vehicles, the ATVs or quads. If you are new to the game, I was being sarcastic on that one because the ATVs, these four little fellas here, are hated by a lot of people because they are way too good. Similar to the rally cars, they are a subclass of the off-roaders, however, what they lack on flexibility on corners, they get on boost power, and the boost power that those vehicles have are insane. Because they are very light, the boost acceleration combined with the boost regain and the huge amount of boost charge that those vehicles for some reason have makes them very, very overpowered on most of the situations. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, the ATVs are not very easy to get used to it. You're gonna need a lot of time until you get the hang of it. I personally suffer a lot just to record this video. And in general, they perform very similar to each other. Besides, maybe the power sender. This one is by far the most oppressive of the four. This might be the most infamous vehicle on Leash 2 right now, and it's for good reason. Besides what I said before of how overpowered it is, if you get someone that knows how to do aerial shortcuts, they can abuse this thing like nuts. Personally, I suck at that, so I cannot show you how efficient this vehicle can be, but trust me, people that know how to do it are gonna do some aerial combat on your ass. But yeah, ATVs might need a nerf, but I really doubt we're gonna get anything from Milestone at this point. And to be frank, they are really not good on all the tracks, and especially technical tracks, they will suffer. And that's why I probably wouldn't recommend for new players to start using ATVs, as they require some getting used to it before really getting on that very OP territory. And we finally here on the final part of the video, we reach the Swift class. Because the Swift class has a lot of good stuff, I decided to divide in three categories. The first one that we're gonna talk about is the low tier Swifts. What have I already said about the Swift class? They have solid stats, high boost regain, especially compared to their sister classes like Balance and Rocket high boost acceleration. Oh yeah, they are barely affected by off-road, so it's a pretty stacked class. And similar to Rocket, there really is no bad Swift. Okay, okay, that one is Milestone Fault. On one of the last updates, they decided to fix this car. Supposedly, it was floating over the track, and I don't know what the hell they did, but now the Fiat 500 Super Treasure Hunter has no top speed. It basically was the best switch, and now it's straight up the worst. It has no top speed, might be the lowest top speed in the game right now, and it really is the only Swift that I would not recommend using. Oh yeah, there's one more, the Hot Hip. This one actually is pretty good, 
but the reason that I would not recommend as a Swift is because it does the reverse disguise. It really isn't a Swift, it's a rocket. And although it's a pretty good rocket, it really can't compete with the rest of the Swifts on its class. As for some recommendations of Swifts that are around this class level, for the fans of the acceleracer, the Synchro is pretty great, probably one of the best acceleracer cars that you can get. It's a little stiff compared to other Swifts, but if you manage to get used to it, it can perform just as good as some of the best Swifts. The Bifalco 2, a personal favor of mine, has one of the best handlings of the Swift class, even though it's quite a big car. However, it has a small downside, which is its top speed, one of the slowest on the class. So I probably would not recommend using Bifocal 2 on tracks with lots of straights and not enough boost pads. A car that was a bit of an underdog before is the Corvette C7 convertible. This one is just an all-around good Swift vehicle. It has enough handling to be competitive on technical tracks, as well as top speed to work on high speed tracks. Lastly, on vehicles of the base game, I would recommend the base Fiat 500. Thanks to its size, it's very easy to take the insides of the corners. As for DLC vehicles, the Highway 35 free pack brought Ballistic back and another very solid 3 boost charge switch. As it stands right now, it's the best Highway 35 vehicle. Now, I think we can move on to a subclass of the Swifts, which are the bikes. So, like the ATV, I'm not the best guy to talk about bikes. I barely use them, but they are very, very strong. Even someone that doesn't know how to build them, like myself, can do pretty well if you get used to it. They are very strong on certain types of tracks, but even on tracks that are not made for them, they still can perform very well. As you expect from bikes, they have high acceleration because they are very light. They also have amazing boost acceleration power, similar to the ATVs, but they don't have the boost regain of the Swift cars. Some of the issues that bikes have are they tend to oversteer way too much so you see a lot of people just hitting on the inside of the track or just going off the track completely. Bikes are also very fragile as expected. Any little hit can send them flying away, especially if you are boosting. And they don't do well while landing from jumps. They have some balancing issues while landing so they lose a lot of speed. Yet, if you can manage all those issues, there will be very few things that can keep up with it. Most bikes have very similar performance, but if I have to highlight one, it would be the Dugato Panigale. It's basically because this bike has one of the high top speeds of the game, and it also comes with 4 charge boosts. So essentially, it's on the same OP level as stuff like Power Sand and Surf and Turf. So yeah, you can look at bikes as very effective drifter vehicles, but way riskier. And finally now we can talk about the last group of vehicles, which are the popular kits, or the best Swift cars. If I was gonna do a top 10, you bet that these vehicles would be there, with the ATVs, Surf and Turf, and the Ducati Conigale. And what makes these Swifts better than the others? It's just better stats and more boost charge, that's basically it. And even though they are not as OP as something like the ATVs or the best bikes, the reliability of this class is their selling point, and that's why most players enjoy using them. As for what I consider the best one from the base game, it is a personal favor of mine, the Split Image 2. Let me try that again. Split Image 2! It's one of the best handling suites. Some people would say it is the best one, and yeah, it mostly has everything. Decent top speed, 4 chart boosts, cool visuals, and because of that it just works on every track. I would not say this one is very far away from the other ones, as most of those Swifts here are very much in the same performance, but if I had to choose one, it would be Split Image 2. Talking about handling, another great choice here is the Classic Packard. It's much less popular than the Split Image 2, but I feel like this one is the best handling Swift that you can get. Some players say this car has some balance issues, but honestly I never had any, so I can't be sure about that. I used to think that this one, the 400Z, was the best Swift available in the game, until I beat all my 400Z times with this pretty Image 2. But if you like JDMs and Swifts that focus more on top speed, 
the 400Z might be an option for you. Another great choice, similar to the 400Z, is the very popular on the 2000. This one has more top speed than what you usually have on these 4 chart swifts, but I feel like it's a little stiffer than the rest. I'm not sure I don't drive very often, I barely drive to be honest. <laughs> but it's a very popular one, just as popular as Split Image 2. It would be unfair to not talk about the Night Shifter. This one is the only 3 charge boost that I feel like deserves to be here. Basically training the boost power for better stats than the rest of the Swift class. This car would be way too good if it had one more charge boost. Just saying. Lastly, we got the Mini Cooper S. Some players would say that this one is the most broken Swift in the game, but the thing is, the Cooper is buggy. The Cooper used to have a 6 charge boost to show on the main menu and when you select the car and went to race with it, it would go back to 4 charges. So me and the community asked for changes and those changes came, but they were not exactly what we wanted, as you can see. As it stands right now, on tracks that this car can abuse the 6 charge boosts, yep, it is really broken, but on my case, doing the time trials on plenty of tracks, the Cooper only really got one best time, which shows that yeah, it has 6 charge boosts, but it doesn't handle as well as the other ones, so it struggles to use those extra 2 charges. And if you are looking for more vehicles similar to G6, you can check out some of the DLCs. The very first Fast and Furious pack has the BMW M5. It's basically a split damage 2 with a little more top speed, and only comes in mate black. And the Alpha Male Gilly Sprint GTA. Another good choice, not as good as the M5 though. And if you are a fan of Honda Civics, the Honda DLC pack brings some really nice stuff. All those Civics are insanely good. Actually, the Civic Type R is officially the best Swift car that you can get, and the closest to a pay to win vehicle. Um, that's about it. I feel like we cover all the classes, I gave you a lot of options. Remember, at the end of the day, this is only my opinion. This is my experience on time trials and racing against those vehicles online and talking about with members of the community too. If your favorite car is not here, it does not mean that it's bad. My favorite vehicle is not even here and I'm not gonna stop using it. I honestly believe that the roster of the Hot Wheels list 2 is pretty balanced and you can take most of the vehicles, get used to it, find the right build and the right tracks and you can make it work. Maybe I'm not the best example of that, I don't win my races most of the time, but if you're looking for the best stuff to upgrade and drive, then I think the video pretty much covers that for you. Anyway, thanks for watching, sorry for the long ass video. And good luck on your offline and online adventures. I see you guys on the next video. Ciao.